This is Section 410, Antiderivatives, Content Objective 2, which is to find a specific antiderivative when given an initial condition. When we're done, I'd like you to be able to explain the difference between a specific antiderivative and a general antiderivative. First, we have some vocabulary. We have something that is called a specific antiderivative, and it is the one particular antiderivative out of an entire family of curves generated by the general antiderivative that satisfies a particular condition. That is, it is the only antiderivative that passes through a specific point. That specific point is called the initial condition, and it is used to select the specific antiderivative and to nail down the value of C found in the general antiderivative. So we have some steps that will help us solve these types of problems. To find a specific antiderivative, you must first find the general antiderivative, which will be that capital F of X plus the arbitrary constant. Then we are going to plug the initial condition, or that given point, into the general antiderivative. When we do that, we will end up with an equation that has capital C as its only variable. So our job will be to solve for that C, and then we will rewrite the general antiderivative with the C plugged in. With example one, we're going to do step one first, which is to find the general antiderivative. So we have little f of x's derivative is negative 4 times x to the negative 2. In order to get the general antiderivative, we need to ask, what did I take the derivative of that gave me little f prime? Well, that answer would just be regular f of x. And then on this side, I will move through the coefficient, and then I'll hit this power rule backwards. So if we recall from objective 1, the power rule backwards requires us to add 1 to that exponent, and then divide by the new power. If I simplify that now, I'll end up with a 4 over an x plus a random constant. So our next step is to plug in the initial condition. Well, I was told that the point 2, 5 is on the graph of this function. That means 5 will come out when I plug a 2 in. Notice that my only variable now is this capital C, so I can solve for it, and I will get 3 equals C. My final step is to go back to that general antiderivative and plug the C in. With example 2, we'll follow the same steps. Our first step is to find the general antiderivative, which will move through the coefficient. Do the power rule backwards. We add 1 to the exponent, divide by the new exponent, move through the coefficient, add 1 to the exponent, divide by the new exponent, and then this is a constant, so the derivative of a constant is just a negative 3x plus that constant arbitrary c. My next step is to plug in the point. Well, I know that f of x is 7 when I plug a 1 in. So if I simplify, I will get 7 equals a 2 plus a 2 minus a 3 plus a constant c. I can solve for that constant c and get a 4 minus 3 is a 1, move the 1 to the other side, and I will get c equals 6. So there's my third step. And my final step is I go back to my general antiderivative, and I plug in my c. Notice we can double check this by plugging 1 in. I'll get a 2 plus a 2 is a 4, minus a 3 is a 1, plus 6 gives me a 7, so it passes through the point. And if I take the derivative of this, I will get this back. With example 3, our final example, I've given you f prime and f double prime, and I'm asking for f. So this one's a little more challenging because we have to go backwards twice. If I undo the second derivative, I'll get the first derivative. I'll move through the coefficient, hit the e and leave it alone, and divide by the derivative of that inside. If I simplify, I'll have a 10 e to the 5x plus c is that f prime of x. So I can now plug in the f prime information, and I'll get a 10 out when I plug a 0 in. That means my capital C is going to be 0. And because I have to do this twice, I'm going to have 
two arbitrary constants. So I just found my first one, and now I know that f prime is 10 e to the 5 x. Now I need to find f, so I will do the antiderivative one more time. The antiderivative of f prime is little f. I'll move through the coefficient, hit that e again, and divide by the, co the derivative of the inside, and now I'll have a second arbitrary constant. If I simplify, I have 2e to the 5x plus that second arbitrary constant, and now I'm going to plug in the point on the original function. That means I get a negative 2 out when I plug a 0 in. Well, e to the 0 is a 1, so I have a 2. If I move that to the other side, I will get c sub 2 equals negative 4. So my final function, f of x, will be 2 e to the 5x minus 4. Double check, if I plug 0 in, I get a 2 minus 4, which is a negative 2. And if I take the derivative of this, I would move through the 2, hit the e, leave it alone, and multiply by 5, which would give me that f prime that I needed. Remember that tomorrow in class, I will expect you to be able to explain the difference between a specific antiderivative and a general antiderivative.